It's the summer of 2010. Lorenzen Wright is living in Atlanta with his buddy, Mike G. When Lorenzen and Cheryl were divorced, he, um, he ended up moving to Atlanta. So I went and moved in on with him, and you know, we just had a good time. By this time, his NBA playing days are over. But what's not over, apparently, is his relationship with his ex. Even though Shara and Lorenzen were divorced, they had certainly a physical relationship. They still had an intimate relationship. But it was more than just sex. People who know them say they were still in love and were even thinking of starting over. Lorenzen did propose to Shara after they were divorced. The children saw him ask her to marry him, and Shara had said yes. So on this one particular weekend that summer, Lorenzen's coming back to Memphis to visit. Shara calls him and asks him to go to a dance recital for their daughter, Lauren. And it turns out his sister, Denotra, is having a baby shower that weekend, too. So he's got a lot going on. I drove Lorenzo to the airport and fly out to Memphis. As I look back and now, I think that something was going on, because Lorenzo was, he was always on edge that whole week, which I thought was unusual. Whenever Lorenzo came to Memphis, Phil would be the first person that he would call. Completely unexpected, out of the blue. He calls me and says, hey, bud, uh, I'm in town. Uh, let's hang out. Just bought a new vehicle, and I wanted him to ride in it. And we rode all around the city. He took a picture on my phone of himself that evening. To look at that photo, you would never know that Lorenz and Wright's life was in serious danger. Just after 10 p.m. on this hot July evening, temperatures just now dropping below 90 degrees. Doesn't look like we're going to have any relief in sight. This is Tim Van Horn, and you're listening to WREC. Just a few hours later, a 911 call comes into the nearby town of Germantown, Tennessee. Germantown is just east of Memphis. It's one of the smaller municipalities right outside of Memphis. It's a very short call, and you hear a, a desperate voice on there. You hear a series of gunshots. Georgetown 911, where's your emergency? Hello? 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 I don't have nothing but gunshots. There's no caller ID, so the dispatcher doesn't know where the call is coming from specifically. They thought this call was a hang-up. There was no follow-up. Operator picks up the phone. Georgetown 911, where's your emergency? And you hear gunshots. Hello? To me, that calls for immediate response. Like, you leave it alone. You leave it alone? For our report, 2020 reached out to the Germantown Police Department to ask why they didn't immediately follow up on that 911 call. They declined to speak with us. But at the time, a department review concluded that dispatchers properly followed procedures. It was an opportunity lost. <laughs> because on that call, is the last time anybody would hear Lorenzen's voice. I probably called him four or five times that night. And I text him about three or four times. And I just really figured that, you know, maybe he had fallen asleep. He was supposed to be coming to the baby shower. I kept calling him all that day, and he didn't answer the phone. Well, I was getting married July 20th, and the Virgin Islands, and so he said that he was going to come over and, and, and be my best man. I get a phone call from one of my other great friends saying, hey, man, Lorenzen is missing. His friends weren't really concerned in the beginning because that's that, that was just Lorenzen. It's like still living that NBA life. Those guys, they'd hop on a plane and go to Vegas. Not hearing from him, you know, it wasn't it wasn't out of the norm. 
But when Lorenzo's mother found out that he wasn't even calling his daughter Lauren back, that was too much for her. She filed a missing persons report. When I first got the news, I got a phone call. Did you hear that Lorenzo was missing? Initially, I was not alarmed. I'm thinking if he's missing, he doesn't want us to know where he is. It's on purpose. I became concerned when I saw the concern in her face and in her voice. When that missing persons report is made officially known, it becomes a major news story. Developing tonight, a former player for both the Memphis Tigers and the Grizzlies has disappeared, and now his family is worried about his safety. Talk just spread all over Memphis. Where's Lorenz and what's going on? So the Memphis Police Department starts a missing persons investigation. When somebody goes missing, you have to look at their circumstances at the time. They look at their inner circle. Is anybody new? Did they owe anybody any money? What was Lorenzen's financial condition after basketball? It was not good. Uh, it was not good at all, and, and that really affected him greatly. Lorenzen Wright made as much as $55 million playing basketball. But because he and Cheryl were spending like crazy, there actually wasn't that much left. So to compensate, he always had some side businesses. I think he was doing the side businesses just to, you know, try to create other streams of income for when he did retire. He wants to invest in something else, have other things going on, you know? His dad ran his uh, sports cafe for him. He also had a car detailing shop. Among those off-the-court business relationships, there would be one relationship that would come back to haunt Lorenzo Wright, a man named Bobby Cole. Bobby Cole was a high-level drug dealer. How would Lorenzen be connected to a drug dealer? But Cole was not only a drug dealer, he was also a race car driver. And Lorenzen, as it turned out, loved cars. At some point, they meet, and Cole agrees to buy two of Lorenzen's cars. I remember him telling me, man, I sold the guy my cars. Now, what the guy was doing, I did not know. The feds had actually looked into this long before Lorenz and Wright disappeared to see if any of his transactions with Bobby Cole involved drugs or drug money. And the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration, actually investigated that connection, interviewed Bobby Cole. They didn't find any connection. But those drug rumors would actually start swirling again. This time, when police interviewed his ex-wife, Shara. She also told law enforcement that about six weeks earlier, she had gotten a visit from some unknown individuals that wanted to do Lorenzo some harm. Shara Wright, in talking to investigators, claims that she saw Lorenzo leaving with a man she didn't know, carrying a box with drugs. Kind of painting this portrait of a guy who's troubled, who's lost all his money. He's trying to make money illegally. Is it impossible that people who knew him and loved him might not have known about this other side that involved drugs? Well, it's possible, but he told me about everything that he was dealing with. And I believe that if he had been doing that, I believe he would have told me. This whole idea that he was involved in drugs, what did you make of that? Y'all don't want me to say what I want to say. But the police are on the brink of a breakthrough. The investigation made a dramatic turn when Memphis police found out about that Germantown 911 call. That revelation eventually leads investigators to that desolate road, the callous cutoff, the shortcut from Lorenzen's house to his mom's. And there, they will make a chilling discovery. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.